بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم We greet you on this the 27th day of the month of Jumadi al-Ula uh, that is 27th here in my island of Trinidad far away in the Caribbean I don't know what it's for you but for us it's the 27th day of the month of Jumadi al-Ula and I greet you with Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh, a greeting of peace. And there are different kinds of travelers in the world. There are those who travel expecting to come back soon. There are those who travel knowing that they will not come back after a long time. There are those who travel not knowing if they'll ever be able to come back. But every one of us is a traveler who will one day travel never to return. And that is a certain travel. And uh, when one reaches all age, as I have been blessed to reach, uh, then you must prepare for traveling never to return. And as I approach that time, uh, I recognize that the greatest gift I ever had in my life was the Blessed Quran uh, and the teacher who taught me and took me to the Quran may Allah have mercy on his soul my blessed teacher Mulana Dr. Muhammad Fadlur Rahman Ansari and Rahimahullah uh, and uh, as I approach the time of departure never to return there are, I want to share with you that there are two passages of the Quran which have become for me the, the most important of all, the dearest of all to my heart. And today's video is devoted to sharing with you. You probably already suspect what the two, two verses, two passages are. Those of you who be monitoring my scholarly profile but here is here is the secret of the two passages of the Quran which are dearest of all to me I don't think there's any Darul Loom in the world which has paid more than scant attention to these two passages I don't know if there are scholars anywhere in the world who have paid so much attention to these two practices as I have cho chosen to pay so much attention and they both are passages of the Quran which pertain to the Quran one is a passage pertaining how to recite the Quran and the other is a passage pertaining to how to study the Quran there you are you probably already know the two passages well, let me tell you one more time. The first is a passage in uh, Surah al Qiyama, which has taught me the strategic importance of reciting the Quran if I want to study the Quran. That you cannot study the Quran unless you are reciting the Quran. No one ever taught that to me, no teacher ever taught that to me. I found it myself in the Quran and if you want to recite the Quran in order to study the Quran you have to recite it the way Allah recited it and the passage which helped me to to write my book the Quran and the moon which might turn out to be the most important book I've ever written in my life the Quran and the moon a book that you need to read over and over and over again the most important passage teaching me how to recite the Quran which led me to the entire system of time in Islam sacred time and how the recitation of the Quran is linked to the system of time and that when you do this you'll be able to save your heart from beating faster and yet faster and and perceiving time moving faster and yet faster when all of mankind are stuck with that disease 
of perception of ever faster moving time, you will not, your heart will be back to normal. Here is the passage, and it is in Surah Al Hijr of the Quran. You will have to search for it, it's at the end of the Surah. And Allah begins, and Allah never says, remember, never say Allah says and say, and then you say, Auzu Billah, because, 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 because Allah. Allah never says Auzu Billah min ash-shaitan rasheed Allah never says that No, you are saying that What you must say is Ba'ad Auzu Billah min ash-shaitan rasheed Because you cannot recite the Quran without first saying Auzu Billah min ash-shaitan rasheed I go for the Salatul Juma And now all the time I hear the Imam on the Mimbar saying Call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala A'udhu billahi bin ash-shaytan Well, A'udhu billahi bin ash-shaytan Allah never says A'udhu billahi bin ash-shaytan But they say it on the member all the time So, Ba'ad A'udhu billahi bin ash-shaytan bin rajim Wa kul Inni ana nazirun mubin Tell them O Muhammad Tell them that I am a warner. I have been sent as a warner to warn. And when I warn, I do so in a manner which is plain and clear. What is the warning? Kama anzalna ala al-muktasimin. The warning is sent down to a people who are known as Al-Muqtasimin. Warn them, O Muhammad Who are Al-Muqtasimin? Let the Quran answer. Why should you answer? We don't listen. To, we're not listening to you. We want to hear what Allah says. Who are the Muqtasimin? al uh, What is it? Um... I've forgotten now. وَكُلِنِي أَنَزَ النَّذِيرُ مُبِينَ كَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَى الْمُكْتَسِمِينَ الَّذِينَ I've forgotten the ayah now. They're those who break up the Qur'an and deen into pieces. You see what happens when shaitan intervenes and you forget? You break up the Qur'an into a deen. فَوَرَبِّكَ O Muhammad, I take an oath by your Rabb. I will I will question all of them on judgment day for what they have done to this Quran what have they done to this Quran how did they break up this Quran into bits and pieces answer it is in the recitation of the Quran Allah has separated the Quran into into surahs a surah means a wall and he is he's separated the Quran into surahs for the purpose of recitation not for the purpose of study and this is what he says in the Quran in surah to Isra Quran and faraknahu litakrahu ala nasi ala mukfin that he has separated the Qur'an into surahs for the purpose of recitation ala muqsin over intervals of time and so we have no right we will be making a tremendous mistake in breaking up the Qur'an further into other parts and pieces and so when we are reciting the Qur'an, every day we are reciting a juz of the Qur'an in order to complete the Qur'an in a lunar month. Our critics have more important things to do. Leave them. We are the ones who say you must recite the Qur'an one juz at a time every day.
in order to khatam the Quran every month. We are saying that, let the critics go their way. So if you are reciting the Quran and you want to complete a Jews every day, what the Quran is saying is never leave any surah of the Quran incomplete. Mm. You must always complete the surah for your Jews of the day. And so, when you look at the manner in which you recite the Quran now, everybody, Islam, mashallah, you see that on the first day, when the moon is seen, they will recite one part of Surah Al-Baqarah and they chop the Quran. That's all of them, including the Darul. And then the second day, they write a, a second part of Surah Al-Baqarah and they'll chop the Quran a second time. And then on the third day, they'll finish Surah Al-Baqarah and do part of Surah Al-Imran and so on. As though the Quran is a piece of cloth and you can take your scissors and cut it into 30 equal parts. Have you no sense in your head that you follow Shaitan who cut the Quran into... It must have been Shaitan himself who chopped the Quran into 30 equal parts. Hmm? For you who will listen to me, and now stop that nonsense, that sinful thing. Remember what Allah says. For Rabbika lanas'alannahum ajma'een. I'm going to question every single one of them. A'amma kanu ya'amadun. For what they have done to this Quran. So this passage of the Quran in Surah Al-Hijr. This is the passage par excellence which has helped me alerted me to recite the Quran the way Allah recited it. And if you are reciting the Quran the way Allah recited it, then this Quran can protect you in Akhir al-Zaman. Number two, this Quran can now help you to be able to study the Quran as it ought to be studied. So this is the first passage. That is for me the most important passage of all in the Quran, in Surah Al Hijr. I commend it to you. And now we turn to the second passage, Bismillah. And it is in Surah Al Waqiyah. And I had recited it so many times, so many times, until one day I was in a jeweler's shop in Mombasa. And the owner of the shop, the jeweler, had gone out and was late in coming back and his son was keeping my company. And the son then asked me a question pertaining to this passage of the Quran. And that triggered me off, what nothing had done before, to go back and study this, this passage of the Quran. And it then I then recognized that this is a passage pertaining most of all, most strategically important of all, to methodology for study of the Quran. That was methodology for recitation of the Quran, and this is methodology for the study of the Quran. And the last messenger said, he said, I leave behind me two things. He didn't say three, he didn't say four, he only said two. The Sunni and the Shia could continue to fighting over what is the second thing, but everyone agree the first thing is the Quran. Those who are fighting out there, they don't bother about the Quran. They are fighting over what is the second thing, but they are not bothering about the first one, the Quran. If they were bothering about that, Iran would not be worth, still stuck in bogus money today. So tell me, if the Quran is the most important thing I am leaving behind me, and if you follow this Quran, you'll never go astray. If that is what he said, then is it not important for us to devote attention to the study of the Quran? And it is this passage more than any other which helped me to understand my teacher, Maulana Dr. Muhammad Fadur Rahman Ansari. The most important thing he taught me was methodology for the study of the Quran.
As a final year student at the Alimia Institute of Islamic Studies in 1969-1970, we had to study as a book of uh, Usul al-Tafsir, or methodology for the study of the Quran, uh, the book written by uh, Sheikh uh, Waliullah Dehlawi, uh, and the name of the book was Al Fawzul Kabir fi Usul al Tafsir. And uh, you can study that book left from the beginning to the end, and you will not find what my teacher taught me on methodology for the study of the Quran. You'll find that methodology in his book. The Quranic Foundations and Structure of Muslim Society in two volumes. And that two volumes is part of my set of books that I, I sell as a set of books. But you will also find it simplified in my book, Methodology for the Study of the Quran. And it is this passage more than any other which stands at the very heart of methodology for the study of the Quran. My profile as a scholar of the Quran, my profile is based most of all on this passage of Surah Al Waqiyah. And here it is, Ba'da'uzu Billahi min the Shaitan Rajeem. Fala uqsimu bima waqiyah nujum. And I take an oath by the positions in which the stars are located. وَإِنَّهُ لَقَسَمٌ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمٌ And this is no ordinary oath or qasam. This is an absolutely, supremely important oath or qasam. Allah is saying, إِنَّهُ لَقُرْآنٌ كَرِيمٌ This oath, this oath, about the positions in which the stars are located, this is applicable to the Quran. Wa innahu la Quranun Karim. That this is applicable to the Quran, which is a noble Quran. But listen, listen, listen. Fi kitab in Maknun, the Quran, which we are referring to is located in a kitab. The Qur'an is not the kitab. The kitab contains the Qur'an. The Qur'an is a recitation. A recitation. That's the meaning of the word Qur'an. And this Qur'an or this recitation is located in a kitab, a book which is protected. None can touch this recitation, not the book. None can touch this recitation, except those who are clean and pure. You can't touch something looking in the world of sound. The recitation is located in the world of sound. So this is not to be understood literally. It means that you cannot penetrate this Quran. Not even surface penetration. Tell Washington, forget it. Tell the Mossad, forget it. You fellows can't penetrate this Quran, not even the surface. You cannot. Unless and until you are guided to study the Quran the way you study the stars. And your heart is pure and clean, meaning it's pure and clean in, in its relationship with Allah. It can't be pure and clean in its relationship with Allah when you constantly tell lies. You shamelessly tell lies. You are a people who have no morality in your hearts at all. You have only lies on your lips and lies in your heart. There are lies and then there are great lies and then there is 9-11. So what is the passage? That you the Lord God, Allah Ta'ala, is saying, I take an oath by the positions in which the stars are located. The implication is that the verses of the Quran are like the stars in the sky. Let me repeat that. 
The verses of the Quran is like the stars in the sky. The dogs can keep on barking. This caravan will move on. The verses of the Quran are like the stars in the sky. You never study the stars in the sky for direction to know which way to travel, to, be, to turn for the Qibla, to which direction you travel in a desert, to get out of the desert, which direction a ship should navigate to get to a port by studying one star. Remember, he put the star, Wabin Najmi Hum Yahtadun, and he put the stars in the sky for us to be guided, direction, direction. And so you need to study the patterns in the sky. You need to study all the stars and see how they are interconnected and interrelated with each other. And that requires investigation. And that also requires for the Quran insight, a capacity to connect dots. And that comes only with nur in the heart. And so they can do what they want, they cannot penetrate this Quran. Forget it. But you, the young ones I'm leaving behind when I leave this world, you must remember, keep yourself clean. Turn away from zina. Never, never go down the road of zina. Turn away from telling lies. Let only truth come from your lips. Do not oppress others. Do not steal from others. Do not rob others. No. Earn your livelihood through your own effort. Always seek forgiveness from Allah. Be kind and be generous and be charitable. So that when you re recite the Quran and you study the Quran and Allah puts nur in your heart, you will get insight. And with that insight, you'll be able to connect the verses of the Quran the way you connect the stars in the sky in order to be able to get direction. And so I share with you this secret. These are the two passages of the Quran which are dearest of all to me in this the last stage of my life. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.